Big shout out to Alicia George, Eric Thomas, DeMonte, Mosby, Jermaine McCloud, Fish Milo, T-Son, DeWay, Thomas Morgan, JJ Frazier. Big shout out to y'all. <laughs>
and we gonna really just lay some rules off. I used to hate going to them darn meetings, bro, because number one, the TV room only so big. You got a hundred people trying to push and fit in there, and I just ain't never trusted because it's one way in, one way out. So if I'm not one of the people right there at the door, I don't like. I don't know what y'all really got going on. That's just in the back of my mind. But I just used to be all extra paranoid. So the officer coming in and do her little count. She leave. When she leave, you got the you got a, the blood dude. He on the bottom range on this side. I think the old GD dude was on the bottom range on this side. The old school crip dude hit the top range by himself, and they was real life going door to door. Yo, knocking on the door, pulling the door open. If anybody in the room, they're like, hey, bro, we having a darn meeting. Y'all step in here real quick. Everybody came in the TV room. Once everybody was in there, they said, like, bro, this darn player. We be having females working this dorm because all the dorms, every dorm don't have a woman working. There's some dorms, like, if you're labeled as the stupid dorm, y'all the dorm that's known for doing dumb stuff, y'all won't get a female to work. Y'all only get men. So if you got a dorm where a female working, it got to be kind of okay dorm to some degree so they like bro this dorm player the warden don't be messing with us like that we got females working and you got a lot of major players in this dorm and when they say that they just mean people who who really getting money who who really making things shake around the camp they like bro we want to keep this dorm i'm talking about the least attention from the police as possible bro young folks that they rob people. That's how they make their money. You know what I'm saying? They rob people. Uh, they steal. They play all type of games. So they was just basically laying the law, letting us know that it's going to be a zero tolerance for stealing. If you are a civilian, then any and everybody will deal with you if you do something goofy. But if you're a part of a gang, your gang must deal with you and depending on what it is you probably got to get on the door because we don't want no bs people in this dorm and if your gang refuses to deal with you then everybody in the dorm gonna come together as a collective whole and deal with you so that's basically what they were saying they said for the people who be robbing people they said there's no more robbery going on you know they came up with little jobs people can do to make them 25 30 40 50 dollars a week like they really tried to you know present opportunity and everybody was cool with it bro everybody agreed with it and they got to that last thing they said and that's when you heard people <laughs> sucking their teeth when the dude said there is a zero tolerance as long as you live in this dormitory for methamphetamines bro you could smoke chris brown cds al green cds strips you can cook liquor which they call a buck or white lightning he was like, bro, you can do whatever you want to do, but that cream is a zero tolerance. So I think it was the Muslim dude that was saying that. So the Muslim dude looked at the, the head of the Crips. He was like, you agree with that? He was like, yeah. He asked the blood. You agree with that? He like, yeah. He asked the GD. You agree with that? He like, yeah. He asked the Mexican. Everybody said, yeah. Everybody was on the same accord. So you got a few of the geek monsters. I was like, hold on now, bro. How I'm saying? You got grown men in here, bro. Like myself, I ain't gonna lie, I do the cream, bro. I'm a, bro, I'm 34 years old, bro. How can you tell me my choice of drug? I can't do it. Like, like, I, I was cool with everything else, y'all was saying, but y'all tripping now. The Muslim dude responded and was like, I'm not telling you you can't do the drug. That's not what we're saying at all. You can do it if you want to, but just not in this dorm. So dude was like, what difference would it make whatever dorm I'm in? And dude was like, because, bro, like we just explained, we trying to keep this dorm under the radar. This a player dorm, bro. We want to keep it clean. We want the females to come in here and be comfortable, not worry that nobody in here finna do no weird stuff. Methamphetamines is a mind-altering drug. It's mind-altering, bro. It makes you hallucinate. It makes you hear stuff. It makes you do all kind of strange things. So we just don't want nobody in here doing that, bro. If you feel like you're going to do it, just put yourself on the door. If you're caught high or caught doing it, we, all of us, will come together and slide whoever we catch doing it. Simple as that. So everybody agreed with it. So when they left out, one of the dudes went and packed up his property and put himself on the door for real. Because he was like, man, I'm not about to get caught up in this. I know I'm finna do me some cream. Before that night, we went on lockdown. Like three more of them dudes had put themselves on the door. Because they see that they was dead serious, like, 
if you caught doing it, you you in trouble. We trying to keep this darn play. I ain't gonna lie, I liked it like that. I really liked it like that. I ain't gonna lie. I like I say, I don't like to be able to tell a grown man what you can and can't do, but in situations like that, and I you know, I understand the reasoning, yeah, I prefer it like that. So you got these two crypt dudes, one named Stink, one named Jersey, geek monsters. I'm talking about out they mind geek monsters. So for the, over the next few days, you see them like they always together. You know what I'm saying? One of them will shoot out, shoot right back up there in the other one room. They had the tissue in the door for a long time. So I kind of peep like, yeah, they geek. They sneaking and geek. Sneaking and geek. So the Muslim dude that was in the meeting come walking down the range. He see the tissue hanging in the door. So he look at the tissue. He knock on the door. Dude tell him he using the bathroom. So he like, oh, okay. So he go down there, get his hot water or whatever the case. He come back up here, stand on the range. I say about 20 minutes later, the door open. It's a dude who don't even live in that room, came out and went down the steps. And then the dude that live in that room stuck his head out, looked over when he seen the Muslim dude. He was like, oh, what's up, Ock? You were looking for me? And then Ock was like, I got something for that. I promise you, I got something for that. I know just what to do for y'all. So he was like, what you talking about? He was like, don't worry about it. I'm about to make a phone call. Bet y'all I won't be able to do it no more. So I was like, what the hell are you talking about? He was like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So the next day, Stank and Jersey, bro, they both kind of irritated. Both of them kind of almost looked the same. Stank was a slight bit taller. They both dark skinned, both had low haircuts. Both didn't care about their appearance. Stank was missing two teeth. He was missing the teeth here. He was missing the teeth here. You could just see, tell he irritated like that first, that time I told y'all, his homeboy from another building was trying to pass him something, how irritated he was acting that day. That's how he was acting this whole next day. Day after that, the dude Jersey stick his head out the door one day. He like, say stink, say stink. So stink, what man, what's up, what's up man? So he come looking out the room, so he like, man, come here bro. So he like, what, what's up, you, what, what, what? He basically was asking him without asking him, do you got some cream? If you ain't got no cream, what the hell is you calling my name for? I'm leaning on the rail. I'm about two rooms down from where Jersey room at. So Jersey, like, in the room but got his head out. He acting like he don't want to come out the room. So he say, hey, CB, say CB. So I look over, I'm like, what's up? Like, telling me to come here. So I walk over there, I'm like, what's up? I'm looking all through the crack of the door. I'm trying to see where his other hand at. Hey, you calling me over here for doing all like this and you halfway hanging out the door. So I would go over there, I'm like, what's up, bro? He was like, bro, go down there, tell Stank. I know where it's at, just pull up on me real quick. So I'm like, bro, I'm not, I don't know what y'all talk about, I'm not finna do that. So I walk back over there to the rail, I lean back on the rail. So he keep like, hey, he gotta go through all kind of stuff. Stank finally comes down there to the room. Jersey been trying to get him down there. So Stank go in the room with Jersey, so he go in there, he said, swear to God, swear to God, swear to God. And man, next thing you know, the door swing open, Stank come out, go to skipping to his room. And when he came out, the difference that I noticed was when he just left out of Jersey room, he had his flip flops on. When he just came back out of his room, he had his shoes on, tied up tight. So I'm like, oh, they up to something. I don't know what they got going on, but they up to something. So he go back to Jersey room, Jersey walking out the room with his shoes on. Next thing you know, they both flushed downstairs. So, you know, I ain't watching them, but I'm kind of watching their tread to see which way they going. So they going this way downstairs, going this way in here. Stank knock on the door, pull the door up, and him and Jersey both walk in and pull the door up behind them. They went into this white guy named Rose room. Now, Rose does the cream too. Ro got a work detail in the laundry room. So a lot of times when they buy cream from another dorm and if they can't get out there, they be like, just give it to the laundry man because the laundry man is allowed to go inside of every dorm. Stank come walking back out the room. Jersey's still in there. He come walk back out the room, still on the thing like I ain't paying him no attention. He come walking up the steps. He talking about something. Went to looking around. And I looked, like kind of looked at him a little bit. He was smiling a little bit. Talking about, man, wrong with that? Wrong with that. So he looked at me and said, wrong with these, oh man, these gonna call. So he come walk, I'm like, huh? He was like, these gonna call. He's still saying that while he coming around the thing. So when he got close, I'm like, what you say, bro? He said, man, these gonna call around to other dorms telling them don't sell us no cream in this dorm. What kind of language is that? 
I was just like, I don't know, but I just ain't even want to, I really ain't even want to talk to him, to be honest. So he go in his room, he come back out. When he comes back out, I see something poking on his shirt. He go downstairs, go back over there to the row room. Man, I say he's probably in that room for about 10 minutes before you hear, hey, man, hey, hey. And then the door busts open. When the door busts open, Jersey comes out. He got a candy bar in his hand. The white guy, Roe, comes out. He's a pretty heavy set white guy. He busts out the room. And Jersey came out and kind of went like almost this angle. The white guy came out and went almost that angle. He got a candy bar in his hand. He's bleeding from the top of the head. It's going down his face, down the back of his head. Stank comes out the room right after him. Candy bar. But Stank like, man, get back in the room, man. Get in the room. Get in the room. So the dude Ro like, no, nah, mother, you got me... Stop. What's up? Let's do it. We gonna motherfucking do it. Let's do it, motherfucker. So, you know, the other white guys that really rock with Ro, probably about three, four of them, they all take off running down there like, like they sliding with Ro, you know what I'm saying? So now the Crips see what's going on. They shoot down there like, hold on, what the hell y'all got going on? So dude like, man, what's up? Come on, motherfucker, let's bust it out. Let's bust it out. I want to bust you, motherfucker. You going to squirrel me? So he go trying to run up on Stank, but every time he try to run up on him, all the other Crips or his brothers are kind of getting between it. We done had this dorm meeting, so everybody in the dorm is, is, is in a sense, about to get involved in this. You know what I'm saying? So everybody damn near pushed down there, damn near the whole dorm. I didn't go down there. I stayed right there on my rail where I usually be. I didn't want to be down there, but I was looking though. So I guess while they talking, all the people talking to all of them, they were they convinced Ro to go back inside his room because he was bleeding. They was telling him like, bro, hurry up, get back in there, wash that off your head, try to patch that up real quick. And then they, you know, the Crips made Stank and Jersey get away from his room so Ro ain't got to be worried about them trying to do nothing to him. I think one of the Muslims and maybe one of the Bloods went in the room with Ro. So while he like cleaning himself up, they in there talking to him, trying to see what's going on. So they all come walking this way, bro. The whole dorm is like pushing this. Can you imagine a hundred people? Well, with the exception of a few. So can you imagine 90 people all huddled up together, just walking, just pushing one way in one direction. I hear them asking him like, what y'all got going on? What happened? What happened? Like what's going on? So stank frustrated. Because one of the Muslim dudes, GD Blood, whatever the case, was trying to talk to him. And when he went to walking back up the steps, he said, man, come on, man. Y'all leave me to go home, man. Y'all ain't crip. Y'all ain't crip. What y'all questioning me for? Y'all ain't crip business, man. Come on, bro. And then Jersey was like, facts. Facts. Y'all folks all in crip business, man. Y'all worry about the wrong shit. One of the dudes like, what you mean? We just had a darn meeting. Well, we got a whole understanding here. We trying to keep the darn peaceful. We trying to keep the darn player. What you mean? It ain't no crip business. This darn business. We trying to see what is that man pulled out for. Because if y'all was in the wrong, y'all finna get on the dope. And if your crip brothers don't put you on the dope, we finna put you on the dope. And then the other gangs was like, facts. Facts. Everybody was like agreeing like facts. Yeah, you would get up out of here today. So now they go to Oregon. So Stank turn around. He, you know, in the process of him walking back, this is where he had put his candy bar back up. Man, Stank pulled his candy bar back out. He was all saying, what y'all talking about? Now, bro, I know some people just got a heart of a lion, I guess. But listen, bro, you in a situation like that and you got 80, more than 80 people willing to go against you and all of y'all got a candy bar, don't be stupid, bro. Don't be stupid because you're not going to win, bro. I understand some people be scary. Some people going to run. 80 people, bro. No. You, no. Nah. All these guys go to, like, snatching candy bars out. They're like, man, Stank, you got us up, boy. Boy, you got us up. So now, damn near, everybody done got candy bars pulled out at this point. So the officer done stood up, and she just looking like this, but she on the phone. So... I said, hey, man, 12 on the phone, man, 12 on the phone, 12 on the phone. So they know that means she could be calling the code. She could be calling up front to let the supervisor know it's some funny type of movement going on in this dorm. So when I say 12 on the phone, a few people look back at her, but nobody moves, I guess, because this was a situation where it's like somebody could get flipped today. Right now in this instant, we don't give a damn who on the phone. We don't give a damn what code get called. 
if it got to go down like this, it got to go down like this. So they going back and forth. I say within the next 45 seconds, you have four tax squad members and two deputy warden of securities both walking down the range coming towards this way. I say 13 four deep with two wardens coming towards the building, man. When I say that, everybody spread out. Every single individual took off. Boom. Everybody went about their business. At the end of the dorm, like in the corner, this dorm went like this. When you come in the front door, you could go kind of straight, but right almost, and it go that way, or you could go left, and it, it hits the wall like this. So at the end of the wall, it's a corner like this. In that corner right there, there's a vent. Most terrible, worst hiding spot ever to ever hide anything. If you hide anything there, it's simply because it's spared a moment. Police is like right here in your face. There's no other option. You just got to try something. But nine times out of ten, everything that gets dropped in that vent usually get found. Because it's just a deep vent, but it's not really nothing to hide, nothing behind. So if they're looking at it from on this side of it, they're not going to see nothing. But if they go look down in the vent, then they can see it because it ain't really nothing protecting it. So, man, I think I seen probably about seven, eight of them blood dudes take off running down there to the vent. By this point, they they almost right here, like, can walk up to shoot and come in the dorm for real. So I see a bunch of them run over there to that vent and just dropping stuff off in there, dropping stuff off in there, bro. As soon as it's like they finished dropping the last one and kind of spread out a little bit, Popping the door. So they came in there, the deputy warden of security said, What's up? What y'all got going on here? So everybody like, We ain't got nothing going on, war. They like, nah, the officer called, say y'all was mounted up, say she seen candy bars coming out. I'm trying to see what's up, what y'all got going on in this dormitory. So everybody like, man, hell no, nah, we ain't had no candy bars out or nothing like that. So the warden go over there, he talking to the officer, 13, just standing there holding on their vest like this, looking at every single person. He started calling a certain room. I can't remember what the room was. I'm going to just make up a number. He probably said, hey, 156, open that door, step out the room, man. That's the room Ro was in. This with the cert man saying, open that door, step out the room, man. Ro's roommate came out and said, hey, he shouldn't, he shouldn't, sir, he shouldn't. He just capping him down, telling him he using the bathroom. I guess he was still cleaning that blood up. Sir, they ain't say nothing no more. Deputy Warren came back over here. He said, hey, listen, I just talked to my officer. And she said she know for a fact she just seen this entire dorm pull out candy bars. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do for y'all. It's 100 men in this dormitory. Within the next five minutes, I want 50 candy bars. If I can't get 50, I'm locking y'all down and I'm going to shake down until I get as many as I can. I want 50 candy bars and I want it fast. I turn my back to. I turn my back so I ain't looking to see what room they coming out of because I don't care about none of that. But I want 50 of them. That's, that's one thing I do know. I want 50 candy bars. You know, people go to arguing with them and stuff like, bro, come on, bro. Because you know, they know how chain gang go, bro. Ain't nobody trying to give up their candy bar, especially not a large amount like that 50 so you got a few people that go over there to the on the bench because whenever the officer say that they won't never put it in the officer hand or even go let them see them they just walk over there by the bench and drop a candy bar they left out the dorm and sat in the booth but they did kind of turn their back to us but they was still looking too now i think like 10 candy bars ended up on the bench right there he came back in there he went to count he said damn all y'all gonna give me is 10 i said i want 50 so wasn't nobody saying nothing. So he whispered something to the cert. Two of the cert went upstairs. Two of the cert stayed downstairs with the deputy warden. One of the deputy wardens had a paintball gun in his hand. One of the deputy wardens and cert went this way on the bottom range. One of the deputy wardens and cert went that way on the bottom range. One that was on this side on the bottom range. Once he got right about where row room was at, he said, Hey, say Dep, say Dep. He telling the other deputy ward. So I could see the other deputy was. So he looked over there at him. He like, what's up? He like, hey, you know this inmate right here stabbed up? So he said, who? He said, whatever role last name was. He said, him. So he came over there. And man, within seconds, he the other deputy warden had a roll by the arm, walking him out across the dorm. And when he was walking him out, I could see his head was still dripping. It was still bleeding. And when he got to that front door, the cert and the warden made us lock down. They said lock down. Y'all lock it down. 
So they locked us down. I say about 20 minutes later, they came back in there. They say, hey, look, man, dude ain't trying to tell us what happened. And y'all always greasing these cameras up. So to be honest, I don't know who, who bust the boy with the candy bar. And honestly, I'm not even trying to figure it out right now. But what I want is, I want 40 more candy bars. And I will let y'all off lockdown. And I'll make sure that inmate don't come back in here. I don't know what y'all got going on. To be honest, I don't even care what y'all got going on. But I want 40 more candy bars. Y'all throw them out the door, slide them under the door, whatever, however you got to do it. And I will make sure that, you feel me, y'all is good. Y'all come off lockdown, everything will be A1. He said, I'm going to give y'all an hour. He left. You hear a few candy bars drop, bro, but it's nowhere near 40. I mean, I wasn't counting it, but I know for a fact it was nowhere near 40. So one of the blood do say, say stink, say stink, say jersey, say jersey. So they like, yo, what's up? He like, man, y'all threw y'all candy bar out there? So, bro, they was like, hell no, nah, the hell we look like? So he was like, man, listen, bro, listen, bro. We ain't trying to get shut down, bro. All our phones outside the room somewhere, bro. We ain't had no official spot, bro. We can't go out like that, bro. We just had a darn me. We just had what we supposed to do, bro. I feel like it's on y'all, bro. Y'all the one did that stupid shit. It's on y'all to be trying to gather up these candy bars, bro. Y'all need to be willing to pay people up. Or, or however, whatever you got to do, bro. But y'all don't need to be just sitting in that room quiet, bro. So Jersey, like, man, you got me f***ed up, bro. Who the f*** you think you talking to? I'm a grown-ass man, bro. So the blood dude, like, bro, it don't matter. The point I'm making is our phones is outside the room. So uh, Jersey cut in and was like, what the hell they got to do with us? That has nothing to do with us. Them your phones, that ain't got nothing to do with us. He said, if my phones get popped on everything I love, when the doors pop, you getting popped. How about that? If my phones get popped, when the doors pop, you getting popped. So you know now they go to art. Now they talking. Now they talking crazy to each other. They talking crazy back and forth. They cussing each other out. They all kind of everything. They talking about this and this. So then the dudes who who run the scene over them, they had to intervene and basically tell them to shut up. The dude that's running the bloods, the dude that's running the crips. He basically, they basically both had to get in it. They both told they side, you know, they people like, man, y'all shut up, leave that, cut it out, bro, cut it out. So they left it alone. They stopped arguing and stuff. And then 12 came back in there. All about two hours later, man, they came in there with metal detectors. They came in there with these little red hammer looking things that they hit certain places just to see if it sound different. If they feel like you got a good hiding spot, they'll come hitting everything with it. Because if it's shallow or not, you can kind of tell if it's something in there. Man, they went first outside the room. They towed a whole day room up. We watched them pop all them phones and candy bars that them blood dudes had dropped in that vent. Because they came and brought them, put them all on the table. Then they came and did an individual room search to every single room. They ended up popping like four more people phones. Candy bars, Chris Brown CDs, Al Green CDs, all kind of stuff, bro. And then they left out and still had us on lockdown. The blood dude was like, hey, say, Crip gang, man, no disrespect to the Crip gang, man. But but with, with Stank and with Jersey, bro, y'all gonna have to pay for that, bro. Y'all gonna have to pay for our phones, bro. We just went out bad because these stupid motherfuckers want to do dumb stuff. After we just had a, a dorm meeting, a dorm agreement, bro, y'all gonna have to pay for them phones, bro. So Stank came on the dope and bust out laughing. That was his only response. That's all he said. I think three days went by and the warden them came and let us off lockdown. The warden came in there. He made everybody get inspection ready. What the officer told us before the warden got there, that we all need to be inspection ready. All of us need to have our shirt tucked in, you know, all that type stuff. So once the warden get in there, he tell the officer to pop the doors. It's the warden, the de it's the main warden, the deputy warden of security, and I think four cert members. So everybody come out, step outside on the uh, step outside their room. He like he looking around at everybody first. He like y'all straight. So everybody like yeah 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 we good. So he said hey listen. I really spared y'all now with that last situation. I mean, I know I came and knocked some stuff off, but if I real life wanted to go far and do a real dig and search, man, 
I could have got way more. I know this. I know I could have got way more, but I was satisfied with what I got. But I still spared y'all. But listen, man. He said, but listen, man. Now, this first message, this is for anybody. If you are in this dorm right now and you do not feel safe coming off lockdown for whatever reason, if you fear for your life for whatever reason, raise your hand right now and then go in the room and start packing your property. I'm going to sit here and wait for you. Now, they used to always do that. Whenever something popped off, I think I just don't be mentioning a lot, but whenever something pop off and the warden them got to come let us off a lockdown because something crazy happened, they don't know who's really involved with what. So they always ask us before they leave out the dorm, is there anybody in this dorm that fears for their life? Anybody in this dorm that don't want to be in here? And if you say, yeah, I fear for my life, then he'll, let, he'll sit there and wait on you to pack up all your property because they can't just leave out after you said that. Then somebody going in and take your life away. Everybody like, no, we good. We good. Uh, war and ain't nobody got nothing going on like that. So he was like, all right, now listen up, bro. If anything else pops off in this dorm amongst any of you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come shake this dorm down so good to the point I'm unloosening and opening and taking off everything. I'm going to make sure there is no way possible for it to be a pinch of contraband left in this dorm when I leave. I promise you, I will make sure there's not one cell phone in here because I know it's more phones. I'll make sure it's not a pinch of Chris Brown or Al Green because I know y'all got it in here. I will make sure it ain't now a phone charger. I promise you, if something pops off in this dorm amongst y'all inmates, I am going to make it so, I'm going to make time so hard on y'all. Because y'all make it hard on me. This gets reported as my prison. Then it makes it look like I can't control my prison. So I'm just going to, y'all putting the press on me, I'm finna start putting the press on y'all. That's how we finna have to do this from now on. So I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm encouraging y'all, I'm asking y'all, hey, listen, man, don't do that. Don't do it. I don't know what's going on, but don't do it. So everybody like, nah, warden, we good, warden. Warden leave out the dorm. Soon as the warden leave out the dorm, the blood dudes shoot back in their room quick. So then you see the crypt dudes kind of shooting in their room. And then you see like other people like the Muslims came out here. You know what I'm saying? Some of the GDs came out here. You got some people just went to acting like it was a normal day. Like we just was off lockdown and they just went to mingling, doing what they would usually do. And then you got a lot of other people that was highly involved in all that darn meeting stuff like that was uh, voicing opinions. You know, they went and hit the big flow. And I think they peeped the movement between them two groups. And they tried to like kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like be in the middle, like on some mediating type of stuff. So the blood dudes pop back out the room. They got their hands in their pants. One of them say, man, I don't get no f about no lockdown. I don't get no f about nothing that warden was just talking about. Talking about he gonna come shake down. I don't give up about none of that, bro. Hey, listen. Hey, Crip gang. Say, hey, Crip gang. And then you know the few Crips that was standing out there. He like, bro, y'all gonna have to do something about that, bro. Because we had an agreement. We just had a darn meeting, bro. Y'all gonna have to do something about that, bro. Either y'all gonna pay for our phone or a stink in Jersey need to get on the door. Gonna get up out the door. We'll buy our own phones again, bro. But there's no way we done, we done, we done had an agreement, bro, that you know what I'm saying? Such and such, such and such. So Stank came out the room laughing. He said, get on the dough. Got me fucked up. I'm crip for real. I ain't going on no motherfucking dough. You got, you, you trip. So the blood dude, like, he getting ready to come down the steps and stuff. So then that's when everybody else kind of get in the middle of it. And, you know, kind of talking to them about, bro, we just talked about this. We just had this discussion. I slipped back in my room put the tissue in the dough, like I'm about to use it, put the flap over the dough so I can hurry up and pull my candy bar out my spot just in case, bro. So I pulled the candy bar out, put it on me, went back outside, stood back on the range, just peeping and seeing what's going on. By the time I was coming back out the room, you got a few of them guys screaming, man, don't hurt me, bro, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. So now I really don't want to go to this one because you got the bloods done been threatening the Crips. The Crips seem like he bucking on the bloods. And now you want us in this day room again where it's a tight space? Now, the first time it was kind of fishy and, you know, questionable because it's like, what are we doing?
But now, these people done threatened each other, pulled y'all done pulled candy bars out on these folks, all kind of stuff. And now it's another darn meeting. So we go in here in the darn meeting. The blood dude just basically said, shit, bro, we had an agreement on what type of dorm this is, how we finna be living, how we finna be moving. We not living like this. We not moving like this, bro. Y'all went and did something stupid and we don't even know about what. And bro, we got our phones knocked off, bro. So y'all got to pay for that. Or y'all stank in Jersey. Y'all just need to get on the door, bro. Y'all know what the agreement was, bro. So stank in Jersey instantly, like, bro. I'm not going on no dough. Y'all got me fucked up. I'm not going on that dope. Bad Muslim dude, he cut in. He was like, well, didn't we come to an agreement that it was no, we wasn't doing methamphetamines in this dorm? So everybody was like, yeah. Even some of the crib dudes was like, yeah. So then he looked over at the crib dude. He said, so did y'all pull out row? You you buzz row in the head with the candy bar because you wanted to get geeked up and you found out he had some cream and you was trying to rob him for some cream so you could go get geeked up. Hell no, nah, man. Man, row owed me some money, bro. Man, row owed me some money. So the Muslim dude looked over at this other white guy, which was Ro's roommate. And he said, hey, bro, tell me what was going on. And you could be honest, but I promise you, I ain't gonna let nobody jump on you. I ain't gonna let nobody come pull you out. I got your back. And dude stood up. He was sitting on the bench. And he said, Ro was holding some cream for somebody in another dorm. But everybody know he probably was doing it. But he's making it seem like they wasn't doing it. But he was like, he was holding a big bomb of it for somebody because the, his, his friend from another dorm didn't have a good hiding spot. Ro did have a good hiding spot. Some type of way, some type of big mouth person done let it be known that Ro had some cream and he say stank and Jersey came in there first trying to ask him for some, acting like they trying to buy some. And then they whipped out the candy bars and was basically like, just tell them, come on with it, Ro buck. And that's when um stank hit him in the head like twice with the candy bar. And then Ro bust out the room with them and tried to get it, you know, where he got some space at or whatever. So everybody looked back at Stank. So you see the Crip dudes over there like, that what was going on, bro? That what was going on? And then dude Stank was like, hey, bro, whatever we got to do, we just got to do it, bro. I'm not going on no dope. I'm not going on no dope, bro. I ain't did nothing wrong. I'm not going on no dope. So the blood dude was like, well, uh, Crip gang, he looked at the other Crips. He was like, bro, we had an agreement, bro. We came up with an agreement for y'all to deal with y'all own. So, so how we going to do that? Y'all finna slide them or what? So Jersey and Stank, well, Stank went to walking out first. He said, you got me fucked up. What you mean? How they going to handle that? I'm not going on no dope. I don't care if my brother tell me I'm not going on no dope. And Jersey walked straight out behind him. So they like, so what's up, Crip gang? Y'all putting them on the dope? So they like, man, we going to go holler at these guys, bro. So when all the other Crips walk out, you got everybody else in there saying little stuff like, man, they tripping. All they ass to go on the dope, really, to be honest. Every single one of them, they, they acting like they agreed to the agreement. Now they acting like they don't want to do it. We're going to go holler at these guys and see what they got going on. It ain't nothing to go holler at them guys about. You put their ass on the door like you supposed to do. That's the type of stuff everybody else in there was on. So they like shit. If, if the Crips acting like they don't want to put them on the door, we'll put every single one. Because like I told you, it ain't about, it ain't about, Six at the most, maybe five, but six at the most. So they are sitting there talking, I guess, trying to come up with like a little strategic plan. I'm probably one of the most quiet ones in the room, man. I'm not saying nothing. You know, I had reached a point where it's just like, uh, I'm just, I'm going to just go along with the majority, especially, you know, the majority of people that I run with. I ain't just saying anybody, but I'm just saying it just reached a point where I felt like the chain game, the politics, everything is so watered down to the point. Till I'm real life done dealing with you guys in any form of way, I'ma just agree with the majority. I don't want to talk. I mean, unless it's something, you know, super, super crazy or something I feel bad about, then I probably say something about it. So you see the Crip dudes that was over there by a uh, stank room. All I know, the Muslim dude looked over to the uh to the other, the head leaders, and he said, if they bucking, y'all trying to pop on them and put all them on the door. I'm just trying to see right now what's up. When they when they come back in here, if they bucking, do y'all want to just pop on them and put them on the door? 
And bro, it's like in unison, everybody was like, hell yeah, bro. If they bucking, that's just how this finna go. If they bucking, we finna pop their ass and kick them out the dorm. I'll say about a good two minutes later, all the Crip dudes came back in there. You could tell they was very standoffish because every single one of them, like before they even left out, they was just standing up. They was against this wall right here. As soon as you walk in, like as soon as you walk in, you bust that immediate left. They was like on the wall, but they wasn't all like back against the wall, all alert in every angle. They were just standing there normally. But when they filed back in there, back against the wall, looking at everybody, every single one of them had their hands in their pockets. One of them even ran in his room and grabbed a coat and came back in there. Whenever somebody go grab a coat, they trying to kind of give themselves some form of protection if they get bust by the candy bar. So they came back in there, they looked at everybody. One of the crib dudes were like, man, cuz ain't going on no dope, bro. Cuz say they don't want to go on the dope. We ain't finna make them. We ain't finna make them get on the dope. It just is what it is. It's just what it's going to be, bro. I mean, however we got to do it, that's just how we got to do it. So you got a lot of the guys kind of got an uproar and went to jumping up. Like, man, y'all got us stuff. Y'all ain't bucking on the donk. Y'all think y'all is. And like, people was acting like they was about to kind of walk up on them or whatever. Crip dudes pulled their candy bars out. So the the Muslim guys jumped up and kind of turned. Not they didn't turn like one hundred percent. They back to them because you know they ain't about to get popped trying to talk to us. But the Muslim dude, tall Muslim dude, he was like, Nah, bro, no, 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 no. This ain't the way. This ain't the way. So the other people was like, You mean this ain't the way? You tripping? We just talked about this. And then the Muslim dude was like, This ain't the way, bro. No, we don't need to do it like that. So when he winked. And he was like over talking to everybody. All the gangs kind of calmed down a little bit. He was like, bro, if they don't want to go on the dope, it just is what it is. We'll keep this structure amongst ourselves. And then he turned back looking at the crib dudes. He was like, how about we just keep this structure amongst us, bro? Y'all don't want to follow the structure. Y'all don't want to follow the darn rules, bro. Y'all do what y'all do. Y'all just ain't a part of our structure. So if y'all need help, y'all need some food. If y'all hungry, y'all need to use the phone and y'all get knocked off. Y'all ain't got it. Whatever y'all situation is, y'all just not part of us, bro. We not helping y'all. We just looking at y'all like y'all just live here. Y'all not part of our structure. Crip dude was like, say less. And they all fired out. They left out. The Muslim dude was like, bro, that ain't the way. That ain't how we got to do it. They bucking. You know what I'm saying? They think they is six of them, bro, trying to go against like 80. That's not the way we just do it right here because then our dorm, our structure, everything going to get messed up because everybody going to get separated and they going to bring all kind of stupid people in here anyway. He was like, so, bro, we need to do it a strategic type of way. So then he got quiet. Everybody else was quiet. Wasn't nobody saying nothing. So then him and it was the GD, the head of the GDs, the Bloods, that Muslim dude, one of the Mexicans and one of the white boys, the ghost face, they was they kind of like huddled up in a little circle. Each group, GD, blood, whatever, he they just told their people like, hey, y'all can file out, bro. We straight, we about to sit in here and chop it up for a minute. So, you know, we all leave out. I go back to my room. You see the Crip dudes, they kind of stand office, you know what I'm saying? They standing around, you know, looking. They ain't doing nothing strange or nothing, but they just standing around pretty much looking at all of us, seeing if we got anything crazy going on with them. A good hour later, one of my guys come up there. Like, yo, he coming around. He like, say, Bill. I'm like, yo. He like, hey, them folk going to get flipped in the morning. I'm like, who? He was like, stinking Jersey. Like, you know, stinking Jersey, they always going to breakfast. So long as they go to breakfast in the morning, they're going to get flipped. But if they don't go to breakfast, everybody just going to push up on them and put them on the dough, bro. Everybody just pushing up, put them on the dough. And I mean, whoever buck, whoever act like it's pistol plated, it's just going to have to be what it's going to have to be. It is what it is. And I was like, oh, okay, say less. So he left out the room. And that's why, like, if, if, if you do have a dorm meeting and they do come up with an agreement, you pretty much got to follow it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like everybody, you will have the whole dorm turning against you because everybody feel like you hot. Now at this point, stinking Jersey and even the other four crips, they got the whole dorm looking at them now like, like down there, they think they can whoop all of us. Like they really just tried us. That's how people is, you know, is being looked upon. But on that night when we lie down, my roommate asked me, he was like, you heard what they got going? I was like, about what? I just got to play just to make sure we on the same page. He was like, about the morning, stinking jersey. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me. 
He was like, but that crazy, but them boys gonna die. There's way too many people. I say, yeah, that's crazy. Morning time come, bro. I get up bright and early like I usually do. Brush my teeth, get up early. Nobody outside the dorm. I go look out the windows like I always do. No funny looking movement going on out there. Go back up there to my room. 30 minutes later, officer come in, stand by for child. We leave out, go for child. I'm standing in the back with like five, six of my people I run with. People that is assigned to do this, they already know who they is. They done already been told, you know what I'm saying, who they is. People, some I believe they volunteered to do it, but it, you know, the heads chose who they wanted to do it, who they knew, or just go execute that real quick. Don't ask no questions, don't care about nothing. So at child, you got Jersey and Stank came out the child. Now, Jersey was looking a little nervous. I ain't gonna lie. Jersey was kind of doing a little looking around a little bit. Stank wasn't studying. It was cold outside. He had his coat on. He was kind of walking like this. He was just walking, going straight to child. He just kind of had an attitude like, bro, I don't care. I'm not studying. None of y'all, y'all ain't gonna do nothing to me. Like one of them type of attitudes. Man, as we got closer and closer to that child hall, it's kind of another little dark spot where the lights been knocked out at. And once we got up there, bro, it was like three dudes, different groups. Stank in Jersey walking like right here. They was in front of me, but not directly in front of me. And then they ended up coming around, like coming up this way. And bro, you seen them slowly pulling candy bars out, bro. And then next thing, you know, I seen a dude doing like this. That's when I realized he didn't have a candy bar. He had a belt. He had his belt with the lock on the end of it, bro. And that man did like this. And you just heard a loud ass smack sound. Man, he smacked. Stank in the back of the head with the lock so hard, bro. Stank head went to bleeding instantly, bro. Stank didn't even look back. He took off running some. They chased him, popping him with the candy bar, popping Jersey with the candy bar. Stank trying to reach for his. He done turned around with it. One of the dudes stabbed him like in the wrist area. He done dropped the candy bar. Jersey didn't even have a chance to pull his out, bro. They was on his ass like white on rice. They was pulling them dudes out so bad, bro. And I'm going to tell you what I didn't understand. If I know it's me and five of my guys in the dorm, that's all it is, the six of us total. And we just bucked on the entire dorm. And we know for, and this is a 100-man dorm, and we know for a fact we are in the 100% wrong. There's no way possible that two of us are going to child by ourselves. It's not going to happen. All six of us finna get up and go to child. That's how it will happen. That's how I would, I wouldn't be able to accept nothing less than that because we wouldn't be able to trust nothing. We would not be able to trust nothing. None of them got going on. We need to all be together at all moments. And that's actually a security measure that a lot of gangs use. So I just didn't understand how they were so comfortable getting up, going to child by themselves without their guys anyway. Eventually, Jersey and Stank finally went to running towards the kitchen. Them dudes chased them, still busting them with the candy bar, bro. The line ended up stopping. Me and a few guys I was chopping it up with back here, we ended up stopping. We just leaned against the gate now. We know it's just a matter of time before the folks come lay us down on the ground, so ain't no sense in Keep trying to, like, we going to the chow hall. Stankin' Jersey makes it inside the chow hall and go running in there. Once they get in the chow hall, the dudes that was busting them, they stop. They don't chase them in the chow hall. They stay outside the chow hall. Dudes that was pulling them out, they turn to the chow hall, facing the chow hall, because it's like a, uh, the building, the height of the building, I would say it goes up to about, like, a second story apartment level. That's about how high it is. And they turned to face the chow hall and they all took them candy bars <clears throat> and went to throwing them on top of the roof. So what happens is you would never get those candy bars back. But when the police come and try to do some type of search, I don't got no candy bars on me. So you're not going to have a reason to lock me down and take me to the hole. So that's why they threw them up there on the roof. Uh, the officer that was in the kitchen clearly called the code. She shut the line down. The people that was still trying to walk in there, she told them get back out. And she called the code. Next thing you know, the cert team, 
all the officers from every building come taking off running over here to this, uh, running over here to the kitchen, bro. They, cause this the thing, this how it is. We walk in, let's just say this is the door to get in through the kitchen. We walk in from this way. Once you get here, it's actually a gate where you can walk through here and that'll help you get to medical real easy. But to make sure people's not trying to do wop, they leave this gate locked. So when you get down here, you can only go in the kitchen or you can turn around and go back to where you just came from. So when they took off running in here, they went in the kitchen. Then it's a long gate in the kitchen to make sure you can't do up. They had to run around that long gate and then they could go out through that door. So now they on the other side of this gate, bro. They went to running this way. And while they up there running and running, the cert, the, the police that was coming from this side of the gate, they went to unlocking the gate and trying to ask them, y'all all right, y'all all right, bro. They, they bleeding bad, bro. They was bleeding bad, but they was asking them anyway, like, y'all all right, y'all all right? And they was unlocking the gate. And, bro, as soon as they unlocked the gate, Stank fell. Jersey kept running. Stank was on the ground. They called a code to get medical. A few of them officers stayed right there with them. All the other cert came running over here with the pepper spray and the paintball guns all in our face, telling us to lay down, get on the ground, get on the ground. So we laid down on the ground. And they just got everybody up, like, however many officers it was. Like, if it was five officers, they got five people up at a time. And one officer checked everybody, patted everybody down, checked every single person. They found a candy bar on, like, three people. Instantly put all three of them in handcuffs. They had three of the officers take them, walking them to the hole. These people had nothing to do with it, though. They they wasn't busting nobody or nothing. It's just if you had it on you that particular morning, you was going to the hole because they don't know who did it. They don't know why it got done, none of that. Medical cart finally pull up. Man, these folks go to wrapping the uh the blood pressure thing around the man's arm while he's laid out on the ground still losing blood, bro. They went to hitting it. The nurse got the thing on. She checking it, doing whatever she doing. And I'm looking at him lying on the ground like, damn, bro. I mean, I ain't no doctor or nothing, but... I don't think that's how you supposed to do it. I think you need to be getting this man up off the ground and be getting him somewhere to maybe y'all can plug up some of them holes or see if there's any type of internal bleeding or any arteries been hit or something. You know what I'm saying? So after they do that, you say something to one of the officers and you got one of the officers, bro, grab the man, stank by his pants, like the back of his pants with one hand. And then another officer grabbed him by the back of his shirt with two hands. And he said, three, two, one. And they picked him up, bro. And they picked him up. Blood. I don't know exactly what hole it was coming from. But, you know, at that point, it's just coming from, like, his face. You know, it's all on his shirt. It's, like, dripped off his face a little bit, bro. And they dropped him on the cart. And the nurse got on back in the driver's seat. One of the officers sat on the back of the cart and was, like, holding on to his belt loop so he don't fall off while they driving. And they drove him to medical. And that was just, that was just sad, bro. That was so sad, bro. So once they get everybody checked, they make us all go back to the dorm, of course. But now, instead of just sending us back, they escorting us back. Every single one of them is walking back to the dorm with us. Once we get to the dorm, instead of letting us in the dorm, we have to bust a right to go in the dorm. The officer was standing outside the dorm and she looking crazy. She looking worried. She looking nervous. I had already knew what was going on. She said something to him. That thing, you know, he unlocked the gate to the yard. Told everybody to go on the yard. It's cold as hell. I said, well, what the hell we going on the yard for? He like, man, everybody on the yard. Everybody on the yard. So, man, we go up. We all go on the yard. He closed the gate again. Locked the gate. Lock us on the yard right in front of our building. So, now everybody go to looking through the gate looking in the dorm trying to see what the hell going on bro inside the salad port you see a whole bunch of mats stacked up probably about five or six of them stacked up and then you see a whole bunch of property bags like the big bags where people put their property in and stuff and it's all piled up in the salad port in the dorm you got the other four crypt dudes that was left in the dorm 
they all standing by the door. Everybody else is like spread out, but bro, you could see, you you could see from a mile away what was going on. They probably pushed up on them and gave them like a, a get on the door, get pulled out ultimatum. And you know, I think Stank and Jersey was really the only two that was willing to take it however far and really just don't give a damn. The other four had, you know, somewhat common sense, I guess. So they just got up and was like, hell no, nah, we ain't going to do that. So when they went to child, they planned to get them on the walk because when somebody get bust on the walk, the dorm don't get in trouble for it because it happened on the walk versus they would for it happening in the dorm because on the walk, they know they got multiple inmates out at one time. So we honestly don't even know if it came from your dorm. We just know it happened on the walk. You would still get locked down, but it won't be nowhere near for as long as if it happens in the dorm. So the, the all the certain stuff, they go all in the dorm and he talking to the officer and stuff. And you got a lot of people posted up outside they door like they standing up for count or something. So he saying the, the warden go in there, he saying something. We can't really hear what he's saying. But one of the dudes saying, man, they got to go, bro. They got to go, warden. They got to go. They know what's up. They got to go. They can't live in here. It's over with. They can't live in here. And she went in there and was messing with some paperwork for about a good 15 minutes. And he came out with all four of them. And then when they came out, you know, you know plenty of people off this yard talking crazy, talking smack to them. Yeah, y'all start that shit. was going to be sweet, huh? Took them to the hole. And once they got through the, that next gate by the child hall, that's when they unlocked this gate and let us go in the dorm just in case, you know, they got to get through a gate first so can't nobody do nothing to them. Then they let us back in the dorm, man. And they locked us down just for the rest of that night. And then the very next morning, they let us out. And it's just like, like I said, I just stress that how do y'all split up, bro? How do y'all separate like that? Like, how? That's impossible. When you know you got smoke with the whole dorm, when you know it's an issue with the whole dorm, man, you don't separate from your guys for nothing. You know what I'm saying? The dude stank, he was straight. I guess he just lost blood, lost consciousness. I don't know. That's probably the reason he failed, but he, he ended up being straight. But all in all, bro, this is really, I feel like the overall thing is, who want to live like that? Who wants to be in a position where you talking to other people that's in prison just like you and y'all got to come up with rules and stuff to not do in a dorm or ways we got to try to keep the dorm like this? And then if you buck on something so simple, like, bro, you can have your life taken away. You can get injured really, really bad. And then it make you think when you sit back and think about it, like when you really sit back and think about it, all of this first began with Jersey and Stank trying to get high. They wanted some meth. So they was, they was ready to break the rules anyway. As soon as the rules was in place, they wasn't studying none of that. They was trying to get high. Bro, all of these people, well, these two people got hurt very bad because of they wanted to get high. It all started because they was trying to get high. Who want to live like that? Now, you got these four guys who following the rules in their bed, sleep one morning. And then you got all kind of guys bum rush in their room. I'm sure Candy Bars was out telling them, get on the door, get pulled out. So they made a decision to get up and get on the door. But it's like, who the hell want to go through that, bro? And then especially for the gang people, everybody want to be so gang, gang, gang. What if you gang, gang, and then one of your partners do something stupid, and then you get woke up out your sleep one day with a, with 70 people in your face with candy bars. Like, man, get your ass up out that bed and get on the door. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not worth it, bro. I think we should just do the right thing, make money, not excuses. It's your boy, Bill. I'm gone. <laughs>